What's going on guys? Chris Cook in Nashville here. Welcome to the kitchen. Today we're going to do a really special recipe for you guys. This is going to be fantastic for families. Kids are going to love this. Um, I'm really excited about this one because I haven't done anything quite like this just yet. And I live in the South. I live in the world center of casseroles. So today we're going to do something real special. You can do it ahead of time. You can keep one in the freezer that's been baked and all you gotta do is put it back in a low oven and bring it back to temperature. It's gonna be absolutely fantastic to feed a crowd. Guys, we are doing carnivore cheese burger casserole. And I'm gonna put a little, a little picture right there for you of the final product. I'm really excited about this. I have a brand new technique for putting the casserole topping on this, which is gonna be kind of like a burger bun. And I think you guys are really gonna love this one. I sure hope so anyway. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out. Um, just so you know, I do have Patreon memberships and YouTube memberships. If you like this kind of stuff and you want to support the work that I'm doing because it makes a difference to you, please consider going to my Patreon or joining my YouTube memberships. Patreon $5 and up and YouTube memberships, you guys are going to get some really cool extra recipes, bunch of behind the scenes content. On Patreon, if you want to support and you don't necessarily want all those extra recipe videos and you don't want to put five bucks a month in, there is a one dollar option if you want to just throw a little bit my way so I've got some more resources to make more recipes for you. I would love to do that. And uh, guys, if you like this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and comment down below. All right, enough talking. Let's get to making some cheeseburger casserole. All right, guys, the first thing I need to do is separate out three pounds of ground beef, and I have a bunch of it here. So I'm going to separate out the ground beef. This is ground chuck. It is 80% lean, 20% fat. I wouldn't go any leaner than that for something like this. You use whatever kind of beef it is you want, but I'm going to do three pounds of this 80-20. I also really like the 73-27, but they don't sell the 73-27 in this size that I can find. So we're going to take three pounds of that, put it in the bowl, weigh that out, and we'll be right back. Okay, that is just slightly over three pounds. That'll do. All right, here's everything else we are going to need. We're gonna need 16 ounces of sour cream, approximately eight tablespoons of egg white powder, two teaspoons of beef gelatin, approximately one to two cups of shredded cheese. Depends entirely on how much cheese you want. Use whatever kind you want. I have Colby Jack here, and I have a little bit of cheddar that I also am going to shred, but we're gonna shred that ourselves. Totally optional but highly recommended if it does not bother you. Mustard, bacon. I'm going to use probably about eight slices of bacon. You can use more, you can use less. It's not really going to matter, but whatever makes you happy. Three eggs, approximately a half cup of heavy cream, Redmond's salt, onion powder, garlic powder, black pepper. This is everything you're going to need. So let me show you how we're going to do it. In that mixing bowl is going to go 16 ounces of sour cream. Okay, totally optional, but it does make it really nice. I'm going to add two tablespoons of melted butter. Optional two tablespoons of melted butter in with the sour cream. While this mixture is still warm because of that melted butter, I'm gonna put in about two teaspoons of beef gelatin. You can use any unflavored gelatin you want, totally unflavored. We're gonna put that in on top while that butter is still warm and now we're gonna use a hand mixer and we're gonna get this really well combined. Okay, once that's combined on medium, go ahead and turn it up on high and let's whip it just a little bit to make sure everything is beaten in so there's no lumps of gelatin. 
20 to 30 seconds of work there does a fantastic job. Now, we are going to add the egg white powder. You do not want to do it all at one time because it will clump up on you if you're not careful. So I'm gonna do one, roughly two tablespoons. Now, I'm not exactly measuring this because I'm more concerned about the texture than I am the exact amount. And I'm gonna show you what that means in just a second. Start this on low because it will fluff up in your face if you're not careful. Once you have that mixed in enough that it won't fluff up anymore, you can turn it up on high and beat that in really well for 10 to 15 seconds on high. Okay, once that's really well mixed in, we're gonna do two more tablespoons of egg white powder. Spread it around as best you can. Now we're gonna mix this in and then we're going to check the texture to see if we need more. Okay, now we're gonna check the texture. What we're looking for is something very akin to brownie batter. That's pretty close, it's just a little bit runny. So this may take up to eight tablespoons of egg white powder, just depending on the cream cheese, I'm sorry, the sour cream that you're using and how wet or dry that sour cream is. You may have to use more, and if it takes even more than the eight tablespoons, that's okay. You don't wanna completely overdo this. You know, I wouldn't go much past maybe say 10, but if you mix in all eight and it still seems a little too runny to you and it's not quite a brownie batter, you can always add more. I'm guessing that this is probably gonna take maybe two more tablespoons. I don't think it's gonna take the full eight. So we're gonna add two more tablespoons of egg white powder and we'll check the texture again. Okay, after the next two tablespoons, I'm gonna check the texture and you can see it's definitely getting thicker. Okay, so what I'm looking for is when I pour some out of this little spatula spoon that I have, I want it to build up a little bit before it sinks down in, right? So watch what happens. See how it holds a shape and then it slowly starts to go down in there and combine? That's what I want. I want it to be thick enough that it will hold its shape a little bit because that's what's going to make this in the oven puff. This is gonna be our bread biscuit style mixture that goes on top of our casserole. This now goes into the refrigerator to firm up. That butter and the sour cream and the gelatin are all going to firm up a little bit in the refrigerator. It's gonna make it easier to work with. This is gonna go in the refrigerator while we work on the rest. All right, y'all, we are going to brown our three pounds of ground beef and get this cooked up nicely. I am not going to add any seasonings just yet. The only thing that I'm gonna to add to this to actually brown it is salt. And the salt is really just there to help pull the extra moisture out of the beef as it's cooking. It just helps it brown up a little bit easier. So I'm just gonna put a couple of large pinches of salt over it, and then we're gonna season it and sauce it and all those things. We'll check it for salt then, and if we need to, we'll add more. So just a couple of large pinches of salt just to get it cooking properly. All right, guys, our ground beef is browned, and I'm just kind of breaking it up just so it's gonna be easier to work with in a casserole dish. Now we're going to drain all that excess liquid off of it so that it doesn't make our casserole soggy. Now I imagine some of you are sitting there asking yourself, Chris, why use such a small colander that the pan is so much bigger than that and have to go through all that trouble to so carefully get the ground beef into it without spilling any? Don't you have a larger colander than this? Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> uh, my wife bought this for me because I sent her a link to a colander and she didn't think to look at the dimensions of it. And when it arrived, she was like, I think I ordered the wrong thing. And I was like, no, 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 this is exactly what I wanted. Um, because I'm a big boy and I cook a lot of food for a lot of people. 
<laughs> I thought this might be a little overkill since it doesn't fit in my sink. But if you have a bigger colander, use it to drain your ground beef. Okay, our freshly drained ground beef goes into a bowl. And we're gonna let that cool off while we work on the next step. While we are letting the beef cool, bacon. Okay, I've got like eight or nine slices here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I've got eight slices of bacon here. Use however much or however little bacon you want. I'm gonna chop this up into small pieces. You can lay, honestly, like full slices of bacon across the top. If that's the way you would like to do this, you can chop this up. But I thought this would be pretty tasty to chop up the bacon and actually mix it in with the beef and the cheese and the various things that are going to go into our cheeseburger casserole. Of course, if you don't use pork, you don't eat pork products, leave the bacon out. In the interest of less dishes, we're gonna use the same old dirty pan we cooked the ground beef in because less dishes mean more to me than more dishes. So I'm gonna fry the bacon here over a medium heat as brown and crispy as you like it. Frying bacon. Keep frying that bacon over a medium to medium high heat. You don't want to burn it, but we want to cook that extra liquid out of it. But don't get rid of that bacon grease. We're going to use that. This is good enough for me. I, you know, I've never been like a super crispy bacon kind of person. I know, I know, sacrilege. Uh, probably to some of you, but I've always liked my bacon just a little more of a tender chew. If you like it crispier, keep going. I'm gonna go ahead and stop right there and I'll show you what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna scoop the bacon out of the pan in on top of this ground beef, but I'm gonna reserve that extra bacon fat in this pan. We wanna get all that in there. Okay, so the reason we wanted the beef to cool down we put that hot bacon in there, that's gonna cool down very, fairly quickly when we start to mix this together because then we're gonna finish up the actual mixture for our casserole. All right guys, you remember that half cup of cream? We're gonna pour that in here with the bacon fat. I did not measure that. It's roughly half a cup. It's not like super vital. Like if you really wanna measure it out, absolutely go for it but at the end of the day you just need somewhere in the ballpark of a half cup now we're going to whisk that together with that bacon fat all right guys change of plans apparently my uh whisk that is used for non-stick pans has gotten up and walked away so we're just going to use a spatula essentially what i need to do is cook the excess liquid off of this cream until this thickens up into a nice thick cream sauce kind of texture. I'll show you that here in a minute. Now while you're doing this, use a whisk or a spatula like this. Make sure you are stirring constantly. I've got this on a medium heat right now. You can turn it up a little higher if you want it to go faster, but you do not want this to burn against the bottom of the skillet. So you have to keep it moving and I'm scraping the bottom of the skillet. And you can kind of see when I pull See how it kind of leaves a track behind it? That's because the cream is thickening up. Okay, so we're just gonna keep cooking that down until it gets nice and thick. You're gonna see the size of the bubbles getting bigger and the cream starts thickening down and it's real frothy. That's when we know we're good. Do you see how it's large and bubbly and thick? And when I pull this through, it leaves a trace behind it. That's when it's getting thick. Pull this off the heat. Okay, next you are going to add about a quarter cup to a half cup of that shredded cheese. Just depends on how cheesy you want this to be. So I'm gonna use probably close to a half a cup here. Okay, but we need to do this off the heat because if you do this while it is still on the heat, you are going to scorch that cream and you're going to essentially make that cheese separate. So pull it off the heat, but while it is still warm, put the cheese in there, start to mix this around. Okay, and you can see how that cheese is just melting into that cream. And of course you have all that bacon fat in there, which is just fantastic on flavor. Okay, so we stir that through really well. Taste for seasoning. See, look at the, I mean, look, look, at, the, look at the creamy cheese sauce there. Just gonna taste it for seasoning. Oh my gosh, you guys, that is so good. So I'm just gonna put one pinch of salt in it, just a little. 
to elevate that sauce just a little. Doesn't need much. This would be a great cheese sauce to just use with, with anything, honestly. All right, so that's our cheese sauce. Let me show you what we're gonna do with that now. We're gonna take our cheese sauce, we're gonna pour it over top of the beef and the bacon. We're just gonna take our spatula, and we're just gonna stir this all together. Now, if you wanna make this saucier and have more cheese sauce to it, you absolutely can. I'm not going to because we're gonna be adding more shredded cheese to it. This is more just as a liquid component to kind of give you that um, casserole thing. This is sort of taking the place of like, oh gosh, in those old like, you know, classic recipes that make casseroles where they use like the condensed, you know, cream of chicken soup or cream of mushroom soup. This is kind of playing that role, uh, but just not as heavily. Okay, and it's, it's like lukewarm. Okay, it's just kind of warm to the touch. And it needs to be cooled down because now we're going to crack our three eggs into it. So we're just going to crack the eggs right on in there, bust those up, and we're just going to mix those through really well. Now I'm doing this with a spatula trying to keep my hands clean. Guys, the best tool you have in the kitchen is your hands. I don't want to get egg goo all over my gear so that when I'm filming, I have to then stop and wash everything and all that. So I'm just doing it with a spatula, but honestly, this goes a lot faster <clears throat> and you get a lot better uh, mixing of ingredients if you just do this with a hand grip as opposed to trying to use a spatula like this. But we'll get it done. Okay, now is when we correct our seasoning. So I'm gonna put in about a half a teaspoon of salt. I tasted it for salt, and I think it needs just a little more. About a half of a teaspoon of garlic powder, and the same of onion powder. These seasonings are totally optional. Carnivore police, uh, calm down. They don't bother me. If they bother you, don't use them. And some black pepper, same thing, and that's I don't know, roughly anywhere from a quarter to a half teaspoon. If you were going to use the mustard, this is one of two places I would use it. So that's about a teaspoon. We're gonna do about another teaspoon and about a third teaspoon. So about a teaspoon per pound of meat. This is not going to be really strong in here. It's going to be subtle. I'm just gonna mix those seasonings all through the meat. All right, there's our meat mixture. One more thing we gotta do. We're gonna use the last of this cheese because what would a cheeseburger casserole be without cheese? This is gonna create little pieces of cheese. They're gonna melt and cook through and it's gonna do things like give you that cheese pull when you go to cut a slice of this out. Okay, so that's about another quarter cup of Colby Jack. I'm also going to add in a little bit of sharp cheddar because I like the flavor of that Sharp cheddar as well, and yes, I know pre-shredded cheese has anti-caking agents and those are carbs. I get it, it's trace amounts. You guys decide how important that is or is not for you in your diet. So that's probably about another quarter cup of the cheddar. So we're just gonna mix the cheese in. Okay, there's our cheeseburger casserole meat mixture. A couple more things. We're gonna be ready to put this baby together and bake it. I have the standard nine by 13 casserole dish. You can do this metal, glass, whatever. So I'm not too concerned. So we're just gonna put this right on in here. Okay, we're gonna spread this out. Once you get it all spread out even, push it down to compress it. Okay, and I'm gonna show you why that's really important here in just a minute. Compress it onto itself so that you don't have a whole bunch of big old gaps. If you're using the mustard and you want to add a little bit more, you don't have to do this, you don't have to use mustard at all, but again, it doesn't bother me. I like it, so what I'm gonna do is just a little mustard over the top of the beef mixture here. Do this to your taste. It has nothing to do with the uh, success of the recipe. 
It's just purely how it's gonna taste to you. Remember our sour cream mixture? Look at it now. See how firm and gelatinous it is. It's almost uh, more like a whipped cream. Okay, now you can put it on just like it is and it will work because we were mixing it on high and by doing it multiple times, we whipped air into it. You can also whip it a little bit more now that it is gelatinous, but you have to be careful because if you do that too much, it can actually end up knocking some of the air out of it and we want that air. Here's what I'm going to do instead. I like this a lot better. This is totally optional. You can use it just like this, but this is what I like to do. I'm gonna use some baking soda. Okay, it's gonna react with the sourness in the sour cream. It's gonna cause it to fluff. And baking soda is basically, it's a mineral, it's like a salt. So I don't really worry about it. This is not baking powder, this is baking soda. Okay, and I'm gonna put in about a quarter teaspoon. I'm gonna put that on top and I'm gonna stir really well. Now I've got my oven preheated to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna bake this on a very high temperature, like 450, to get the top, with this is gonna be like the biscuit style topping. We're gonna to get this to brown first. Then we're gonna turn the oven down to 350 and we're gonna continue baking it until we know it's cooked all the way through. Now it starts to bubble up. I'm gonna time it and tell you about how long it takes for me, but this is all gonna be dependent on your oven and the size of casserole dish you use, if you double the recipe or half the recipe or whatever, um, it's going to change that. So I'll give you the time that mine takes and approximately what it's gonna take, which is probably gonna be about 45 minutes to an hour. That seems to be about what things like this usually take. If it takes longer or if it's done way sooner, uh, I'll let you know, but um, it's, it's not usually. This is usually like a 45 minute kind of deal. Okay, so the gelatin and the egg white powder are gonna hold in some of those bubbles and you can see now it's getting kind of frothy and fluffy almost looks like marshmallow cream that's exactly what we want now we're going to put it on top of our casserole and i know this is strange i didn't think it would work myself when i had the idea i just kind of did it on a whim just to see if i could get lucky and i did Okay, so there is our mixture. We're just going to very gently spread it just to cover. Kind of looks like you're putting Cool Whip on a cake or something, doesn't it? Like, like half melted Cool Whip, I know, it's crazy. Now, I'm gonna show you one more optional step. You don't have to do it. But again, this just kind of goes back to if you wanna do this the ultimate flavor kind of way or if you wanna just use what you got in the kitchen at the moment, that's cool. But see, this is why it's so important to compress your cheeseburger casserole. If you don't compress it down and you got big holes, this runs all down through it and that's no good. Totally optional step, but man is it good. Frozen butter, and I'm just gonna use the cheese grater here and I'm just gonna grate a couple of tablespoons of frozen butter over the top because it's gonna melt and pool and brown and do this amazing thing on top of this bready, biscuity type casserole topping. Okay, just like that. And then I'm gonna add just a little more cheese over the top. More cheese, less cheese, no cheese. It is entirely up to you. It is your world. When you are cooking in your kitchen, you can control, do it however you want. I'm gonna put this in a 450 degree oven for about 15 yeah, 10 to 15 minutes. When I see the top starting to brown, I'm gonna turn it down to 350, leave the oven door open for about two minutes, just so it cools down a little bit, leave the oven door open, and then we're gonna continue baking this, and it's gonna take about 45 minutes, maybe up to an hour. Okay guys, this has been in for almost 25 minutes at 450. So basically what you need to do is watch the puffiness on top of your casserole and look for the browning to determine when it's time to turn the temperature down. Let me show you something. <laughs> I'm so excited about this. It is gonna be so good. Okay, so that's about 25 minutes for me on my oven at 450. So when it gets puffy like this and that cheese is starting to brown, it is time to turn it down to 375.
Back in it goes. Just letting the oven door sit open for a minute because I want to make sure it doesn't over bake the sides and the bottom in there. There's the dog looking for floor snacks. Melody, what are you doing? Oh, she's getting excited about cheeseburger casserole. And guess what? So is dad. Cheese is browned. The crust has browned, but it is soft and bready and puffy. Now it is gonna sink some. That's totally fine. We're gonna let that cool for a few minutes and then we'll cut it. You can see sort of around the corners here, there is some fat that has cooked up out of it. That's totally normal. That's awesome. So we're gonna let that cool just a little bit. We're gonna cut it and we're gonna taste it. This came out looking absolutely fantastic. You can hear the crispy cheese on top, but you can see it's still soft and bready. So let's dig a hunk out and let's see what we got here. Oh, look at that. That looks so good. Okay guys, there we go. There is our cheeseburger casserole. So I put ashes on a bed of lettuce because she loves like lettuce wrap burgers and she loves like lettuce on her burgers and you know the whole thing. I did a little squirt of mustard on top of mine just just because it looks pretty. Uh, you don't have to do that again. The, uh, the mustard is totally optional. It doesn't bother me but if that's something that you're not cool with or if it bothers you or triggers you or causes any issues, leave it out. Don't put it on top. Whatever. So we're going to try this. Yeah. We're going to see how it is. So you want to go first? I guess so, yeah. <clears throat> it looks really good. Yeah. She has not had this, so. Nope, not at all. She did not know that this is what I was making either. No, I just, I come home every night and dinner is always ready for me and I just appreciate that, so I just eat whatever. Mmm. That's really good. Mmm. It is like a, oh, I like the bacon in there. It kind of reminds me of something. I'm trying to think what it is. This is really, really good. I'm going to put some mustard on it. Mm-hmm. It tastes like you're eating a burger, but like in a casserole. The yeah. top, I think, is really what makes it for me. What do you think, Chef? Well, I think it's fantastic. Yeah, I, I really, think it really tastes... like it. It looks just like a burger. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Now, you guys saw the cheese sauce that we kind of mixed through the meat. Um, and then the shredded cheese as well. That's all in there. You can kind of see there what it looks like when you cut into it. Mm -hmm. um, but the meat is all holding together because, you know, just like you would do with a meatloaf, I added that egg in there. I actually added three of them. You know, putting that in there, that plus that cheese sauce and the melted cheese, it just kind of binds the whole thing together and it just makes it a, a casserole. It kind of reminds me of almost like if maybe like a meatloaf and, and maybe like a shepherd's pie had like a baby. Would you if agree a meatloaf, with that? Yeah, if a meatloaf and a shepherd's pie had a baby and the baby was cheeseburger flavored. Yes, exactly. Yeah, this is super, super good. Yeah, I'd happily eat that all day long. Definitely. Um... I've never had something like this is super super good and it reminds me of like all of these comfort foods that i would like eat all the time mm -hmm. you know back before i would do like keto or carnivore or whatever um but it's just something different right like why using like the same basic ingredients like hamburger meat that i'm like man <clears> I love <throat> it's like right it's super good it's a different experience yes absolutely now something else you guys can do if you're like keto or ketovore I did not do this because I'm eating this, although I could dice some up for her and she could put it on top as a, as like a relish or whatever, but you could take like dill pickle mm. and dice it up in little pieces and mix dill pickles all through it as well. Mm. If you like pickles on burgers, you could totally mix it in there and make I love that part of the top. mixture. It's really good, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's because of all the dairy fat and because of you putting the, the butter on top of it when it bakes, it just makes it so much softer. And you don't get that spongy, eggy flavor or texture. And it just tastes like a bun. Y'all have, at this point, have seen how he's made all this. I have no idea. I wasn't here for it. I was gone. But <laughs> I just walked in the door and sat down to eat. I truthfully, when I took a bite of this, it tastes to me like like bread, like a hamburger bun. Mm. And then you got like the meat with the bacon and everything. And almost, it's very much like you're eating like a set of burger, but it goes back to like that kind of like a shepherd's pie and like a meatloaf and like, but like also tasting like a burger. It's like a yeah. combo of like different things, but I didn't get like an eggy texture or anything. Um, yeah. And if you've seen uh, some of our other videos, you know, if it tasted like egg, I yes. wouldn't be eating it. <clears throat> but um, no, it's, it's really, really good. And it's something really good, but very different. That's Super very different good. than anything I've made for us for mm -hmm. a long time. Mm -hmm. So I know one of the things I hear a lot of people say about carnivore is they're afraid that it's just going to get boring. Yeah. 
when you do stuff like this, you can have the exact same ingredients and put them together differently, and it's just not boring. So you basically have like a, a cheeseburger casserole salad kind of thing going on yeah. over there. She loves like taco salads and like that kind of stuff. I'm a big salad eater, <clears throat> for sure. And doing keto, you know, having the lettuce and everything, like it just, it works really well for her. The lettuce would just tear me up, but she loves that kind of stuff. It makes her feel great, and this is just like a totally different way of having like a burger with lettuce or like a lettuce wrap burger but in a completely different way that has nothing yeah. to do with the way like we normally do burgers because like you just eat so much of the same stuff like especially being on a carnivore diet yeah it's kind of something just different so, like Absolutely. you're mixing it up and i think for a lot of people um you know it also kind of makes it like not so much a diet yeah but a lifestyle i'm gonna give it a 10 out of 10. i'll definitely do this a lot more mm -hmm. it's great this was also it's very filling clearly this would be good if you have like a large family. I think you it probably right. Yep, I think you guys would be able to bake it exactly like I did. When it's done, freeze it. You know, let it cool. Wrap it in plastic. Freeze it. You know, you either just put it in a container. You don't mind being in the freezer for a while, or get one of the disposable containers. Whatever you want to do, how yeah. whatever works with your style. Wrap it in plastic. Freeze it. And then when you want to heat it, do like a three hundred to three hundred and twenty-five degree oven. Mm -hmm. If you can let it thaw in the fridge overnight, that'd be great. Mm -hmm you know, or even for a couple of days in the fridge just so it thaws slowly. If you just can't do that, I get it. Take it while it's frozen, try to let it sit on the countertop for, you know, an hour or two if you can, just to start coming up the temperature a little. Put it in like a 300 to 325 degree oven and keep it covered with aluminum foil and bake it until it's hot through. And then that would probably take, you know, an hour and a half maybe pushing two hours to if it's if it's frozen to get it you know all the way there you just have to check it i really do i really am enjoying this though this is super good this is a i grew up with uh four brothers this is a, a dish i wish we would have served in my house because it's super filling yeah if you got a bunch of boys to feed this is this is what you need to make man that's yeah. awesome i'm gonna do some more for you guys in the future i'm trying to give you like different options here and then we'll we'll circle back and i'll show you other recipes i have for these kinds of things different kinds of ways you can do stuff like this you know track your carb counts and be careful about your ingredients for whatever works for your particular diet and the i mean the options are just endless i'll be glad to show you guys some of the different ideas i have and different ways i'll use this for us but this is this is really really good this whole thing is mm -hmm. is gonna get eaten but probably delicious. not tonight because it's huge but you in know, the near future something that's really cool too is like you were saying like you could easily make this ahead of time and freeze it yeah and you'd have leftovers and like you know i think the lasagna and a lot of other stuff you could do some meal prep and easily, you know, be weeks ahead on, on feeding yeah. your family. I mean, that's absolutely a big and the, plus. the cool thing is like these kinds of things, like you could do different styles of this. Yeah. Chicken is on sale, like chicken thighs, buy a whole bunch of chicken oh, yeah. thighs, cut them up in chunks, make a cheese sauce or heck, you don't even have to put the cheese in it. You could make like my gravy, my carnivore oh, yeah, gravy man. and like stir that all around and then do the same thing with an egg, you know, like mm -hmm. a raw egg or two to like set it. Mix that all together and put this kind of a topping on it. Maybe do like Parmesan and you get like a Parmesan cheese chicken casserole, like a chicken oh, Alfredo casserole. So good. There's all kinds of stuff you guys can mm -hmm. do based on what's on sale, but I think there's a lot of cool stuff you can do. So guys, this is a super cool recipe. I think that's uh, definitely something you're going to love. It's very hearty. I can tell it's going to be very filling. I'm really hungry right now. I'm going to destroy this piece. I may have a second piece here in a minute, but it's it's just absolutely fantastic it really really is i'm very happy with this and the the flavor and the texture and everything is just it's perfect yeah it's really really good awesome absolutely any final thoughts on it yum the wife has spoken no yum. It's, it's really good it's really yum. really good That's like great. i said it's just it's like familiar but yet totally different yeah so i'm, I'm a absolutely. big fan of it it just goes to show the creativity in the kitchen that's all we got for you so mm. thank you so much for watching we really appreciate you guys. We love every single one of you. Thank you for supporting the channel. The links are down below as always. Thumbs up, subscribe, the whole deal. And uh, make sure to stay tuned because we got a bunch more stuff coming. Yeah. So thank you guys very much. This is Chris Cook in Nashville and Mrs. Chris Cook in Nashville. Eat your meat. Love your life. Enjoy some cheeseburger casserole. And I'll see you guys in the kitchen for the next recipe. Sorry. There, There is a to... dog... There is a dog under my feet waiting to see she goes, Daddy, if I'm going to drop some cheeseburger casserole. And she's not going to She's not going to get in it well. Okay. I, mean, I really dig this. Milk, okay. come here, baby. Did Daddy not feed you? Oh, there's got some bacon on there, too. Come here. Did Daddy not feed you? There goes, there goes Mom feeding the dog.
feeding the dog who doesn't do anything around here to pull her own weight. Mm.